RV batteries will stop holding their charge over time and will need to replace them. But did you know that the most common reason for battery failure can be human error? Guilty. And this is why we're upgrading from a flooded, also known as a wet battery, to an AGM battery. Hi, Weekend Warrior family, or if you're new here, I'm Randy. And every Thursday, I help you make big memories in small campers. And say it with me, because weekends are just too short. There are three different types of RV batteries, flooded, AGM, and lithium. Our little guy Max trailer came with a flooded battery, also known as a wet battery. After two and a half years, it stopped holding its charge. So my husband Tom and I, we replaced it with another flooded battery. And in less than one year, this battery stopped holding its charge too. So today we're gonna replace it and upgrade to this AGM battery. And after learning what I have about RV batteries, I realized that there were two mistakes that we probably made that caused these flooded batteries to die quicker than they should have. Oh, and at the end, I'm gonna share some tips and things that you should consider if you too decide to change out your RV battery to a different one. So stay tuned for that. Taking out the old battery was really easy. One of the biggest differences between a flooded battery, like the one we just removed, and an AGM battery, the type we're replacing it with, is that flooded battery water levels must be carefully monitored and maintained in order for the battery to perform properly. See these six covers on top of this flooded battery? You need to regularly open and check the water level on each one of these cells. When it gets low, you need to add distilled water to the cell. This is called watering. Because when the water levels get too low, this will cause damage to your battery and reduce the battery's charge. And we did not monitor the water levels on our flooded batteries as often as we should have. And you'll notice the top of this AGM battery doesn't have these cells, so these batteries do not require you to monitor water levels. So, if you have a wet battery or a flooded battery, be sure to monitor your water levels at least every month. Because the first time that water levels do get too low and you don't fill them back up, you can cause permanent damage to your battery. Secondly, we live in Minnesota, so of course our winters get really cold. And if you've been watching my channel, you know I love winter camping. And batteries should be kept fully charged in cold temperatures. When we returned home from these cold temperature weekend getaways and put the RV in our unheated storage shed, the battery was not fully charged. And I'm sure over the course of the winter months, the battery levels got pretty low. Also, when you put your RV in storage, be sure to disconnect your RV battery so it's not charging things that you might not be aware of. Moving forward in the winter months, we'll probably take our RV battery out and keep it at home to help us maintain a longer battery lifespan. So, if you live where your winters get below freezing, make sure your RV battery is always fully charged. The new AGM RV battery that we're going to be installing is the Renogy Deep Cycle 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. And I paid $200 for it on Amazon. I've read a lot of really good things about this brand and about this battery. If you think that this might be a great RV battery choice for you too, I'll leave a link to the exact one I bought in the video description below. The main reason that we upgraded to the AGM battery is because it's a sealed battery. So as far as checking water levels, it's maintenance free. Another difference between a flooded battery, also known as a wet battery, and an AGM battery is the battery's life cycle. In other words, the number of times that you can use and recharge a battery before you need to replace it. And typically, the cheaper a battery, the less life cycles that you can expect to get. And the Renogy AGM battery that we just installed has a life expectancy of 600 life cycles. So we should be able to charge this battery 600 times before it needs to be replaced. Whereas a flooded battery on average has a 400 life cycle expectancy. With that said, you should consider the cost difference between a flooded or an AGM battery. As I mentioned, I paid around $200 for this AGM battery, and a good flooded battery will run you about $100 to $125. So in theory, you could buy two flooded batteries for the price that I paid for just one AGM battery. 
I considered all this information and based on my experience, and especially not having to constantly be monitoring the water levels on a flooded battery, an AGM battery makes a lot of sense for us. If you're diligent about watering a flooded battery, this might be the right option for you. But if you think you might periodically forget to check those water levels, an AGM battery might be the best decision for you too. This is one less thing that I have to worry about and this gives me some peace of mind. I have to tell you that I also really considered lithium batteries, but I had to eliminate this option because lithium batteries are not cold weather friendly. Lithium will not take a charge below 24 degrees. There are heating pads and other workarounds I might have been able to implement, but I don't think that my existing solar is compatible with lithium batteries. I knew that this would probably require a professional install along with other upgrades. Not to mention a good lithium battery starts at $900. But whether you have a flooded or an AGM battery, if the battery gets discharged below 50%, you will damage the battery. This is important. Don't ever let your RV battery get this low. Once the battery is discharged, it's important that you recharge it to preserve the life of the battery. And discharging a battery below 50% will void the manufacturer's warranty. And you should never overcharge a battery either. That's why it's vital that you always are monitoring your battery's state of charge. Here are some considerations that you need to think about if you do decide to replace your existing RV battery with a different one. Will your new battery fit in the same space as your old battery? To find out, measure the inside of your battery case. If your new battery isn't going to fit, you may need a different size battery case, which is not a big deal as long as the space accommodates the new battery size. Make sure your new battery will be compatible with your existing system, such as your control system and your solar panels. Update your controller system to your new type of battery. So I updated mine from a flooded to an AGM battery. If you found this information valuable, please let me know by hitting the subscribe button located right below this video. Your feedback means the world to me and I can't wait to see you next Thursday.